So examples of typefaces or styles that come with connotations already attached to them would range from things like the really obvious ones are the cowboy slab serifs, which we've seen in a million westerns. So Hollywood is part of the reason why they've been so um, steeped in um, western movies. And I would suggest that the whole world over, people would recognize those. The swooping casual script of the Coca-Cola logo, you only now have to see a tiny little section of that and you'll automatically recognize that as Coke and you'll know what it tastes like, and you'll think about drinking it on a, cold, on a hot day, and it's nice and cold. Um, one that always interests me is black letter. So that comes from the handwriting of scribes and was the first printed typeface back in the 1400s. And because it's had such a long history, it's had time to get, have a lot of associations steeped into it. So originally it was effectively the Helvetica of its day because it was the, the most read typeface of its day. Today we see it on mastheads of newspapers. Um, we'll sometimes see, see it on tattoos. It fell out of use in the early 1900s, but then it was used in Nazi Germany. So we now have the associations of um, propaganda um, tied into it. It's also something that gets used on heavy metal album covers. So depending on the context, you will think of different, um, different connotations. Or beer, it, it's also a certain type of beer. I very much encourage designers to take into, into account the context when they're choosing a typeface, but also to show it to a few other people, because it might be that you don't think about the associations, or maybe as a designer you have intellectual um, understanding. So I always encourage people go and show non-designers or go and show your end users and see what their instant responses are. They may not be what you expect. Examples of typography I've seen recently that have really inspired me are, I'm a really big fan of David Pearson's um, work for Penguin's Great Ideas series. I think that's a perfect example of typography where the typeface has been chosen to absolutely mirror the, the history and the moment perfectly and then it's been typeset in a minimalist but absolutely perfect way to convey the right atmosphere and together to convey the idea of the book. An example that I think uses the connotations and has taken them and used them to, the advantage, to their advantage and actually taken them on a step would be the Obama change campaign. The, um, the typeface that he used was Gotham which is one that's inspired by all of the, the signage that you see around New York. So it was very much the people's typeface from the outset. The fact that it's called Gotham is obviously um, Gotham City, so it already has uh, connotations in its name. But then once he used it in his change campaign and against everybody else's typefaces, which were all serifs and they were all these very old style historic typefaces, this is bold, sans serif, blocky, confident. So it used those connotations, but then it also added its own new meanings. So now we associate it with the Obama change campaign and with New York and freedom of speech. Is it possible to have a neutral typeface? Something I, I've thought about and I've been asked about. There's a constant quest, so Helvetica in theory is meant to be a neutral typeface, but we all sort of know that it's not. If you use Helvetica light, it's suddenly very stylish. If you use Helvetica bold, it, it's quite instructional. So. I think it almost has many personalities within the one. Um, the Bauhaus were trying to find the universal typeface, but you look at those and they're very stylized. They come loaded with, with meaning. I, I think it's very hard in the same way that it's, it's impossible for your voice to be completely neutral. I think it's very hard for a typeface to be neutral. I see it from the end user's point of view. So they can't be neutral because when I see it, if I see a clear face a million times on a road sign, I'm going to know that's a road sign without even thinking about it. But we, a lot of the time we are just really trusting when it comes to type. You just take it at face value. You just don't really think about it. Um, to actually manipulate somebody, you would, I think, have to, to start with type works best when it's really close, when the, um, the values of what it's trying to communicate and the values of the communicator are really in tune. So if you can start off by creating something that looks like it works, and then just move it very slightly. So if you create a big gulf, people will spot the lie instantly. So it's like casting um, a movie. If you put completely the wrong cast member in a role, 
people just won't believe the film. But if you switch them slightly, you can then start misdirecting people into believing something that maybe they wouldn't otherwise believe. <laughs>